Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, today in the arena. This is Mono Red. We play Mono Red. Mono Red. Yeah, it's it's back. And my this version is based loosely on a version that Andrew Cunio actually played in the Innistrad Set Championship last weekend. So professional player playing in a competitive event. The only one playing Mono Red. And it has a lot of the same cards. I made a couple of changes. Um, we'll get into those in just a second. But it is an attempt to bring mono red into whatever the heck this meta is and it shows you the level of required aggression that you will see let's talk about the new cards first of all creepy puppeteer is three and red for a four three haste human rogue whenever it attacks if you attacked with exactly one other creature this combat this is a very important thing to remember exactly one other creature this combat you may have that creature's base power and toughness become four three until end of turn so if you have a little one one or something Thing, you can turn it into a 4-3. It's like you got 7 power for 4 mana in hasty mode, which is pretty cool. Then you've got Reckless Stormseeker, which is 2 in red. That's not a new card. You know what that card does. I'm supposed to just go over the new cards. So let's go over a Mythic a lot of people probably haven't seen. You, you have to have Mythic 2 drops in red now. It's just a thing. Ever since Robber of the Rich, the bar is now up here. You need Mythic red 2 drops. How about that? One in a red, you get the Cemetery Gatekeeper. This is a vampire. It's a two one. It has first strike when it enters the battlefield. Exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a type of the exile card, the Gatekeeper does two damage to that player. So against control decks, you really want to exile like their Fading Hope or their Spike Field Hazard, whatever their first play was, so that every time they play an instant, they take two damage. It's also really good if you can hit a sorcery so that when they play their sorcery speed removal, or something like that. They take two damage. If you hit a land every time they play a land, they take two damage. So the Cemetery Gatekeeper is a sneaky way to get more damage. And it's also a really good attacker when you have instant speed burn spells like Play With Fire that we'll get to later because of the first strike ability. I've got three Reckless Impulse. It's not light up the stage, but you've got to see some more cards somehow. And I wanted more cards because I'm running four copies of Bloodthirsty Adversary in the deck. I wanted more cards for it to flash back, more instants and more sorceries that you don't mind hitting with Bloodthirsty Adversary, right? Reckless Impulse is one in a red for a sorcery. It is a common, so yay. Exile the top two cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. So, good way to get deeper in the deck. Hit a critical mass of burn spells. Finish the job. Three Royal Eruptions. Falconrath Pit Fighter. Fireblade Charger wasn't in the original build of the deck. I added two more. I just wanted more one drops, and I love the combination of Fireblade Charger with the Creepy Puppeteer. It's also not bad with Reckless Stormseeker. So that's why we added Fireblade Charger to the deck, because with Creepy Puppeteer, if it dies in that combat, you deal four damage to any target. Pretty freaking sweet, to be honest. And then uh, four play with fires, and we got four copies of this new card, the Voldaren Epicure, one red, one one, make a blood, one damage to an opponent. I've I've been stunned by how many times that one damage has been lethal. Like how many times it's mattered so, so much. This, this deck lives on the edge of the knife and it needs every point. And just the fact that this enters the battlefield and goes ping is more relevant than I ever thought it would be. Snow mana base for Faceless Haven. I really want Frostbite in the deck. I had a hard time finding room for it, and I found that the damage needed to go face in order to really have a place. No face, no place. That's that's the way we have to look at this as a burn mage, because I'd love to be running Frostbite, but too often we need to finish the job by zapping the opponent. So, uh, what I love about this deck is the amount of haste. It's, it's kind of wild how much damage it puts onto the battlefield every single turn people have learned not to respect mono red but think about think about this curve like it, you just put down any one drop and maybe you play a two drop but on turn three you got a three three haster on turn four you've got a four three haster that might also grant four three to something else and on turn five you have a three three haster that flashes back like a burn spell it's it's so much hasty damage, and then you combine it with Faceless Haven, they are never safe. As long as that battlefield has an open path, you can hit them in the face really, really hard. And the deck really impressed me with its ability to finish the job. What you will see in this video, giving it away a little, but it's the easiest diamond I've ever had. It, I'm 
is this deck a real player? I In best of one, maybe, because I have never sautéed a rank so viciously. But the games are close and interesting and fun. So I think that if you're even remotely wondering if a, there's a mono-red playable build, this might be able to do the job. So you'll want to stay tuned and watch the whole video. And without further ado, let's dive in. Let the mono-red nonsense begin. We have a song here. Uh, it's called the Mono Red Song, and it goes, Fervent champion, robber of the rich, this is Mono Red, attack face till they're dead. I'm working on the on recording the hit single. Fervent champion, robber of the rich, and Nyx from the forge, Embercleave, now they're dead. This is Mono Red, we play Mono Red, Mono Red, Mono Red, attack face till they're dead. They suck. They're too terrible at everything, and nobody cares about them, and that's just a fact. If all we do is beat Mono Red, I'll be a happy gamer. I like basically taking that cool thing that the opponent's excited about doing and squashing it! And just destroying it right in front of them. Burn in hell, Mono Red. I hate you forever. Brain dead, Mono Red. Suck it, Mono Red. I hate Mono Red, it's my arch enemy. Now you die, Mono Red. Good game, get wrecked. You know where to stick that GG. Sing along, everybody. Now you're dead, mono red, mono red, mono red. Now you're dead, mono red. And they stepped into the arena, and what do they get? The slayer of mono red himself, covert go blue. Ooh, on the play, one drops for days. Let's rock and roll. The pit fighter. So, how much Prismari are you playing? Plenty, it turns out. Do you think they run Cinderclasm? Do you think that's a card they play? Nah, they would never. They would never have Cinderclasm in a spot like this. Impossible. Impossible. Smoldering egg, cool. Alright, now what? I think what we really want to do is get this to exile an instant, which means we can play the land, use play with fire to kill the egg. Let's attack first. Playing around play with fire. What do you know? You think you know something? All right. So, uh, pop him in the face. Sure. They'll be more likely to uh, block next time with the egg. Uh, on a two power creature, which means the next play with fire will hopefully kill the egg now that they've seen a play with fire. And now if they play an instant, they take two damage. So going into the divide by zero turn, that's a pretty big deal. Just no Cinderclasm, please. How does this deck beat a Cinderclasm? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> Iterate. Why not? <laughs> Exile another iteration. So they miss land. Nice. They do have a mountain, but it doesn't look like they have a, ha a spike field hazard. What you got? Still playing around play with fire. I mean, you're gonna die a hideous death this way. Let's put down our Faceless Haven, say go. Man, they're so close to dead. This turn has to be amazing. All right, they've got Field of Ruin, but that still costs two mana to, to activate. Shatter Skull Smashing, sure. You did it. And now, young Skywalker, you will die. I I can't believe I'm playing the red deck rooting so hard against the blue deck. Like, I'm actually reveling in the death of a blue deck. That's how stupid is it is. 
Oh yeah, the biggest of plats. How about go first with like three one drops again? Okay, how about go first with no one drops? I think we still try it. Maybe we play with some fire and things are good. Yeah? We do need to draw some land, so going face and scrying isn't the worst idea. Mm, I'm killing it. I got I got zero tolerance for small white creatures, okay? Zero. So, let's mark our upkeep for a stop. We might want to play with fire and try to scry into another land. Let's see what they do. Adversary, yep. Alright, so we've got choices. Like, if we draw the land, we can... Like, royal eruption this, and then hold up. Play with fire to kill their next thing. We might also draw another one drop and get to double spell, but I think we really do need the land, so... Oh, wait, we have to go face to scry anyway. Never mind. I often forget how how my cards work. It's, it's part of my charm. Alright, so we royal this, we play with fire on their turn, whatever they play, and then we get in with Stormseeker. Hopefully it's not an Adeline or something with more than two toughness. No Redain. To make me feel stupid. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what they take. They're allowed to take this play with fire if they want to. And then my other cards will still be cheaper. They take the Stormseeker. Sure. Alright, land off the top would be great. Or we can do this. It's okay. Keep them under pressure. Do 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 bum bum. All right. <laughs> I mean, they're they're going for it. But if we draw another burn spell, we're in really good shape. Okay, land is probably the worst draw. Let's put this over here because they'll probably trade with the storm seeker. Down to eight. Night time. Maybe I should have just let that storm seeker flip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of cringe that I forgot that going to nighttime would be so beneficial for it. And now there's an Adeline. We draw the land. That's thick. I guess we go in strong with this creature. And might as well go in with this one. Although this can also eat a 1-1 one -one from the attacking Adeline. And they're not going to block this anyway. It's too free. Alright, let's see if they can beat the trample. Even a land off the top is more hasty damage. They're only at three life. We've got royal eruptions. It's a lot of good things that could happen. Uh, another bloodthirsty adversary flashes back a royal eruption, so that's lethal. We've definitely done a good job keeping them on the back foot. Valorous stance. They needed something like that. It's good. And another blocker in case we draw the Puppeteer. That's good for them, too. And Exile the Royal Eruption to protect from the adversary. All right, all right, they found some options. They really did. Uh, the Gatekeeper. Okay, think that's definitely going to exile a creature. So now anybody plays a creature takes two. Why do they have to be at three, though, instead of two? Brutal. Brutal. Do you think they just drew that? I think they did. I think they would have played that sooner. Yeah, they just don't... They just don't lack the removal, do they? They have infinite removals. So we could try to block the Sentinel. If we block the Sentinel, maybe we trade, but then we have nothing to go with the Puppeteer when we draw land. Okay, they're gonna go unblockable anyway. Never mind. Down to ten. Draw. I think we have a play with fire down there. And then we attack with both. They have to block, block. They exile the Royal Eruption. Well... It's the only play we've got. Wow. 
Where do we send it? We can force a trade with the Adeline if we put the damage here. If we put the damage here, then they have a 2-4. If we attack with both, they have to block here. They go to 1. I guess that's pretty good. Can they win? Don't think so. And then we just have to find a way to deal one more damage. They also have to have enough defenders for that, though Adeline helps a lot with that. Brutal Cathar off the top. Definitely would have played that last turn if they had it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they should attack with both, right? I, then they have two blockers. Creepy Puppeteer, they block both. I guess they're forced then to block with Cathar, which they don't want to do. This one's coming down to the wire. Can we top deck well? <laughs> ah. Ah. Bang! That's... That's a sweet, that's a sweet win. On the play. I guess I'm really relying on Reckless Impulse to do well, but I'll take that shot. Green, do nothing. Okay. Nice, nice three drop curve. We got the hastiest curve you'll ever see. I don't know if any of it will get a, beat a troll. <laughs> I guess Creepy Puppeteer has to try to trade with Troll. Maybe we can get Reckless Storm Seeker to the night side this time. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, Storm Seeks. Let's do the Storm Seeker over here and attack. Love to take that trade. Cobra. Oh, nice. That's not very big. Let's see what else they do with their mana here. They don't have enough to Blizzard Brawl here, but they don't need it. Okay, Ranger class. At least they're small creatures. Aggression. Cool. Ooh. Kind of tempting to set up the Creepy Puppeteer and the Fireblade Charger, but we definitely don't need to. Let's go like that. Let's, let's just haste the holy hell out of them. Remember, it has to attack with only one other creature, so I can hold back this 2-3. So, 9? Or are you going to double block? Double block. If they level up and attack, they're they're kind of conceding the game. You saw them hover their ranger class for a minute. They've got to figure out how to defend against my onslaught, but they're not willing to do it, are they? This must be a chariot. Oh, it's not. What are you doing? They're not. They're, they're they're not trying to defend. Okay, let's think. Let's think. We've got so many cheap creatures. I think we just play all these creatures. And I think we just give this adversary a boost and attack with it, and they probably trade. We could also play this, give it a boost and attack with it. They probably don't trade. It's a pretty scary card. Um, hmm. I don't know. We can play this and attack with it, and they can't trade. I guess they could double block, but it's really risky. I like it. Choose a creature. Let's give it a boost. Let's send in the first striker. Double block. Okay. We'll kill your mammoth. It's amazing that they're not afraid of a removal spell here. Alright. So now we'll play these two. They really want to use that ranger class. They're touching it so much. It, like, if they touch it, maybe it'll just happen for free. There's your level two. Let, let's see our Giga Brain pack leader get in there. There you go. Good boy. All right. 
Lock with Charger, kill your Ascendant pack leader. Good deal. <laughs> Man, they love their pack leaders, don't they? Another Puppeteer. They're so low on life. If we attack with the 4-3 and the 2-3, this is a 3-3, 4-5, 6-6. They have to block. They have to block. We have to attack with everybody. What you got? You trade with the Stormseeker or the Puppeteer. And then we have three creatures, they have one. They don't really have a clock that can come back and kill us on the other way, and they're at four life. Seems good for us. No attack. Probably a good choice. They also held up a lot of mana, so they're planning to use their uh, Faceless Haven. But we get to flip the Slasher, which grants Trample, which is a lot. Let's see what we hit with the Impulse, since we can't power up the Den. Land Falconrath Pit Fighter. We could use a Blood Token to get rid of this. Let's go like this. this target here get that into the bin or into the into the attack we should say send the team opponent going for layer should be lethal with the epicure ping all right uno once again, the finisher, the closer, the one man, a one one vampire that could. On the draw. Oh god, hard mode. All right. Deck does a lot of the things we're looking for, though. What are we up against? A Gideon avatar, huh? Is it? Come on. All right. We'll hit him with the pit fighter. Next turn, we have to see if there's anything to exile to the Gatekeeper. If they play some removal spell here. Or if we just want a 2-mana two 2-1 two first strike. Okay, cool. There's an instant. Nice. That is the kind of thing you want to exile with the Gatekeeper, I think. I'm going to Fading Hope it. Gives me another instant. Oh, they let this resolve before the Fading Hope? That's weird. Now you gotta take two if you're Fading Hope. I mean, people haven't played against this deck much. That is a little bit of value you get. They go oops. Take two. They are cruising, and they did keep on top. And they were on the play. So they're in a good spot. We'll see if we can get some damage on them. But the Gatekeeper's still alive. I can't believe they run Snarl in this deck. Do you have any basics in it? Mania. Oh, it's nighttime. This card is going to be strong. They better have, like, a Divide by Zero. This card's going to hit for five. Fortunately, still no instance in the graveyard for the adversary. We really need to draw one of those. Play around Jwari by playing the land first, even though it gives the opponent info about the haven. There's the divide. Here's two points. Now, if we play another land, it flips the day-night cycle. Or if we play another spell, rather. But I still think it's the right play. Because we need to keep pressuring them. Frickin' Celestis. Four points so far from our Gatekeeper, though. 
Discard's expressive iteration. That's scary. Their hand is dece. <laughs> Their hand is dece. These are these are probably gonna die. There's no way you kept a three mana draw two over a two mana look at three, right? Wow, they did. Huh. Um. Now what? You can exile a land here. I think sorcery is probably better because it's probably the next thing they're going to play. I think we're going to get swept, but I think we can get them low enough. Because if they take two from casting a sweep or sorcery, they go to five. Then we hit them with Haven, they go to one. We just need to draw a point of damage. A play with fire or another epicure will do. There's the sorcery. Off the top, it's a land. Still nothing down there to flash back. But we can take a shot here with the blood. Wait a minute. Resolves. Decline. Activate. Kill him! Or we could just play a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two haste and it's good enough. My red mage powers are, are slowly uh, sparking. On the play. This Fireblade Charger is gonna, gonna be strong. Gonna be swole. Hopefully we draw a 2-mana play. That's, that's all I can really hope for here. Even if it's a one mana play, something. Okay, land. Boo. Boo. What do you got? Ass pirate. Okay. Cool. Let's get him. Let's get him, little buddy. Let's rumble. We're not scared of no plus one, plus one counters. I'm scared of that. <laughs> I can't lie. I'm I, I'm I'm terrified. All right. Um. Up a deer. Count plus one here. Attack! Attack! Take that action. Eh? What do you think? If we if we get the if we get a block out of them here, it's a huge win. Huge. We gotta get rid of that Valkyrie. It can gain so much life. Our entire game is a disaster. And we get the block. Wow. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, they're gonna tax the next one. But still, we have good attacks coming up. We have good attacks. This is alright. Are you gonna put that counter? Are you gonna keep attacking me? No. Mm. They don't want to block the charger because they have a one toughness creature, so that can attack no matter what. We can just mega buff the charger. That's not bad. So we do this. We go counter here, counter here. Yeah, here. Yeah. Swing. What you got? I mean, if they block, they lose both creatures. So, they go to eight. Most players can't can't live with the idea of losing their creatures. And let's exile their Valkyries, so every creature they play, they take two. Take two. Okay, but that thing has lifelink, so we need to draw some kind of way to keep that thing from destroying us. I guess this has first strike, so I can double buff this and keep attacking with it. And they're gonna have to do something. But then they can counterattack me for a lot. Hmm. 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 Land off the top says we could play Creepy Puppeteer. We could play Creepy Puppeteer and we could increase the size of the charger. We could also increase the size of the Gatekeeper, which has first strike. If the aura bounces off this thing, this is a big attack too, they have to block it. But they want to block it because they just get something back with the aura anyway. 
because first strike damage on the stack first. Get it? Yeah. Um, I think we have to go for it. We have to get rid of the aura. Ow. And they have to block the gatekeeper, but they want to. But, you know, maybe they'll forget. <laughs> Once the aura is clear, we have some pretty big attacks that we can line up. Remember, you can only attack with two creatures to get the Puppeteer's bonus. I, I have a feeling I'll get some notes of why didn't you attack with this, why didn't you do that. It's for the Puppeteer's bonus. Yep, they get their Spellbinder back, but it doesn't tag anything. It's not the worst. Pyre? Pyre gets what? They should put a... Yeah, they might want to attack with Spellbinder, then sack it to the Pyre to get an aura. I think that's a good play, but they didn't do it. So do they? does that mean they have Vanishing Verse? They might have Vanishing Verse. Let's go for the Haven. I think what we do is attack with this, this, and this, and hold back the Storm Seekers, and let them flip to nighttime. Put counter here, here. A little first strike. Okay. Down to six. Down to five. Flip. So we have extra bonuses and trample next turn. They have verse for the gatekeeper. They must have just drawn that or they would have played it last turn. So good top deck. Now they can play another creature, but what they have is another pyre. That doesn't... I mean, that double spells, so these are going to flip. Royal Eruption. Bang. Red deck doing red deck things. This is mono red, baby. On the draw. Good curve, though. Well, kind of. It'll do. It'll do. I'm sure we'll get something in the graveyard, exile it with the gatekeeper, and it'll basically be a billion damage. That's how the card works, right? That's how everybody thought it worked in previous season. Island, perfect. That's what we want to play against, all the islands. Fading hope. No fading hope. Field of ruin, okay. Um, no haste here, so we may as well attack. Coward. You you fear. Alright, so we're gonna play the gatekeeper, right? And get that exiled, so every instant costs them two damage. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way you do it. Punish. You punish them. So, this turn, we can play a two mana 2-2 two, two haste. We can also play three 1-1s. One, um... Playing three one-mana cards is a good way to get swept, isn't it? It really is. We would love to have the Charger on the field to go with the Puppeteer. I don't know if that actually matters, though. This is a tough call. I think we want to play one of our adversaries, to be honest. And then I'm not sure what other card we want to play. But I think we want to go for some hasty damage. Yeah, I had a feeling there was a divide. Why would you do it on the 2-2 Haster, though, with the Gatekeeper on the field? It's pretty weird. Teachings. So, we can have our 2-1 down. 
If we think our opponent's going to sweep the board, we should play the charger because we get the free point of damage. They know about the 2 1. Yeah, let's. Um, hmm. I don't know if this is going to get much better. I don't know if it's ever even going to get a hit in, to be honest. Let's give it a try. It, it, it gets worse the longer the longer we play. So if it's going to get a hit in, it better be in the next turn or two. Tapped Jawari. Huh. Wow. Shields down moment from the opponent. Let's hit him as hard as we freaking can. Down to eight. What else you got? Burn down the house. Okay. Still no spells. Let's just do it again. And this will deal an extra damage if we get swept. Drop them to four. Fortell. Lovely. Go. Cinderclasm. Let's try for a puppeteer. That beats a cinderclasm. Goodbye. Yeah. Out. Oh my gosh. We're destroying this. One win from Diamond. Can I be on the play? Come on. Come on. Oh, all right. That's a good hand. It's all right. How, how hard mode do we have to go here? Mono white? Devil? Format devil? Let's find out. The pit fighter. Let's get in the pit. Try to love someone. Paladin class. Whoa. So they must have a lot of very good three drops. I'm wondering if we're supposed to play the gatekeeper. I think I need to gatekeeper a, uh, a creature. So I think what's going to happen is they're going to play like Elite Spellbinder, take the Gatekeeper. I'm going to play with Fire, their Spellbinder. So I want to play a Charger this turn. And then I can, for four mana, I can play the Gatekeeper and Exile. Exile the Spellbinder that we kill. Okay, Ass Pirate. Ooh, oh, okay. How big is that? One, two, three. All right, we're going to Royal Eruption the Ass Pirate and... We're still a mana short of playing the Gatekeeper, because going second is hard. Alright, no creatures get in damage. Hope for the best. I don't like being down removal spells, because I'm sure something bad is about to happen. But maybe we can force them into bad trades before they level up that Paladin class. Okay, so they go for Elite. They'll probably take the Gatekeeper. We're going to play the Gatekeeper, exile a creature, and attack with both of our creatures. If they take it, they're in pretty big trouble. Because they're so far behind in the race. Yep, good block. So, by the way, you saw how that little eyeball went away? If you play a card of the same name and one was revealed and one wasn't, it does uh, it does fix it for you, so it doesn't matter which one you play. I, I've heard some things recently being like, you should play the one with the eyeball on it. It doesn't matter which one you play, as long as they have the same art, as long as they're the same card. All right, take two. Take another two. This is where the gatekeeper starts looking clutch. This is where the gatekeeper is a gamer. Oh, that's a, that's a huge draw. Ow. <laughs> but I'll take it. Get rid of that little cleric. Send team. Guys, we're going to finish... I, I'm telling you right now, this is unreal. We're going to finish an unbeaten run through Platinum 1. We're going to get... 
a flawless diamond in plat one here from of all the decks in the freaking universe that CGB could be playing mono red. It's kind of a momentous occasion. And yeah, I'm counting these chickens before they hatch, but my opponent is about to fall to like five-ish facing a gatekeeper. So if they play a creature, they take damage. They're also facing a haven and an epicure. I'm pretty sure the math just adds up from here. I'm pretty sure they have no way out. And maybe their new plan is to rope or try to hack the power grid and knock out all the all the uh, fiber and internet and power in northern Michigan. And, you know, sometimes you got to play to your outs. It's just the way it is. That bloodthirsty adversary was clutch, though. There's no denying that was an amazing draw. How about mythic two drops in red, huh? What what happened where the red two drops have to be mythic? There was Robber of the Rich and now this? The dragons are supposed to be the big flashy mythics, right? <laughs> the dragons and the unplayable Timmy, like seven mana cards. But no, we get red two drop mythics and they're actually good. They're just pricing people out of mono red. Let's see if Skiwaka comes back to this game or is off raging somewhere in a corner. I'm playing the best deck in standard, Code Spell Cleric Mono White, and it's unfair that I lose to red. Why would I lose to red? It's not even good. Mom. Mom. Mom, tell me I'm special. Mom. Mom. I don't know. I don't know what, what what goes through the mind of a salty rope rage quitter. They can't press the concede button. But they're more than happy to run it into the ground. Of course, they could also get disconnected. Of course, I know that. You already typed that comment. You who already typed, I bet they just disconnected. I know that. It's not my first arena, but narrative, man. You got to have a, a story that fits the narrative. It's more entertaining that way. It's more fun. All right. Uh, now, let's see, do we put them on the rope, or do we just turn them sideways? Let's, let's give them the full, full business. I'll take two damage. <laughs> let's, let's run their rope to absolute zero outside of combat. This just gives me more time to talk about, you know, the absurdity that is Mono Red. Play the Mono Red song. Somebody have that? Fervent champion robber. Of the rich annex from the forge, Ember Cleave. Now you're dead. This is mono red. We play mono red, mono red, mono red. Attack face till they're dead. Can I remember how the video goes? It's like they suck. They're terrible at everything, and that's just true. I don't remember saying that. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even remember that sound clip. Hmm. Mmm, guys, diamond is easy. This is the easiest diamond of my life. And we are back for the post-game wrap, and let's check the stats powered by untapped.gg. And, yeah, didn't cut anything from this one. <laughs> just, just boom. Just plowed right through it. Awesome. Um, did I get lucky? Was there something fluky about today's video? Is this a repeatable thing? You've got to judge for yourself. I mean, Cemetery Gatekeeper as a mythic is a pretty ambitious craft, and maybe you haven't crafted four bloodthirsty adversaries, so that's uh, eight mythics in the two-drop spot. That's that's a lot. That's not your typical budget mono-red. Um, so I'm trying to think of, like, the good uh, cards to substitute and... You can probably find some things that attack for two or three damage, but it's hard to replicate that kind of direct to face damage from the gatekeeper. I felt my, like my opponents didn't play well against this card, that they didn't really understand what it was doing or how it worked. So I have a feeling that the gatekeeper and the lack of experience against it had a big, I had a lot to do with how these games played out. But right now, I can't recommend something instead of it. We were winning too much. So, I'm really curious if you guys go out and play the deck. Let me know what rank you play it in and how you do. That's uh, something I'm very curious about because I want to know if this is the real deal. Maybe in a epiphany nerfed world, this deck becomes good. Also, it does the white matchup really hold up? I thought that mono white 
which is usually a mono a predator on mono red like mono white in all of its forms is usually out there destroying mono red we were able to beat it twice in this particular video does that matchup hold up? I'm curious. I'm really curious. So, uh, take Z Mono Red into the world. See what you can destroy with it. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.